piece of the puzzle that we don't, we haven't talked about for many, many, many years and it's starting to come into the conversation now is this other 21% that you see um, with building materials um, and manufacturing. So we don't, we don't think about the actual materials that go into buildings, um, what that carbon footprint is, what that process is, um, but all of it together, um, buildings account for half of the global carbon emissions around the world. So that's pretty huge. And um, so we, I think, as architects and designers and engineers, have a huge responsibility to, um, to really progressively address these issues and see how we can shift our buildings to be more carbon neutral to carbon negative. And so um, in 2011, I was um, eight years into my practice. I was working for a large firm and feeling quite frustrated. Um, I just knew that 50 hours a week in an office wasn't for me. I was really missing being outside, using my hands. Um, I'm a very creative person, so um, I was just really thinking, I don't know if this is a sustainable path for me. Um, and I was becoming more and more conscious of the environmental effects of buildings. And it was the whole green building movement, but I wasn't really feeling like we were addressing anything important. And so I was at this point of, I was like 30 having a midlife crisis and I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch gears. Maybe I'm gonna start farming or growing things. I don't know. And in a conversation one night, somebody mentioned this term natural building to me and they're like have you ever heard of it and i'm like no what's that so i start looking into it and i start googling and it's like you know seven thousand years of history of people building with dirt and earth and natural materials straws and natural fibers and bamboo you can see the great wall of china in the the bottom left um picture and so i was instantly excited and just like wow, how have I never known about this stuff? And then I also felt pretty offended because I'm like, okay, six years of school, eight years of practice, and no one's ever told me about this. So in a lot of ways, this is, um, this is an architecture that is, is really an unwritten history. There's, there's not a recorded, it's not talked about in architecture school or otherwise. And so as I began to dig and saw that, wow, there's this whole sort of subculture, underculture of builders and artisans and craftspeople who are building homes and buildings um, from all natural materials, from dirt, mud, um, bamboo, straw bales, um, other natural straws and, and fibers. And as you can see, you can really achieve anything from a very contemporary modern look to the whimsical hobbit hut. So the sky is the limit in terms of aesthetics. So I was instantly just like, okay, yeah, this is exactly what I wanna do. Um, and I don't know how I'm going to, um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I'm gonna do something with it. And so I began to dig a little bit more and found out about this um, history in the, in South Carolina of building with rammed earth. Um, and the, rammed earth is just what it sounds like. It's earth that's been um, rammed layer by layer. Um, and so um, I found out about this church of the Holy Cross that's 150 years old and um, the Borough House Plantation that's also 150 years old here in South Carolina that is built of earth and still standing today and still in really good shape. So this was the real turning point for me where I said, okay, well, if these buildings have been around this long um, and they're still standing, then obviously this is a viable method. Um, and so I came back to, um, well, what I did was I, I found out about some natural building workshops and I, um, I quit my job and I went and I um, took these workshops and I started to learn about all of these um, amazing methods and materials and then came back to Charleston and um, started to do my own experimenting. Um, 
And so I started um, smearing mud on my walls and um, just really learning from a hands-on perspective and learning from other teachers and um, just became extremely excited um, and felt that I really finally figured out how we can blend nature and buildings because it's really two opposing forces. You've got buildings which are very man-made and we're trying to keep nature out of them and then you've got nature which is wild and free and so this was really this blending of the two. Um, and so I just continued to um, educate myself about these methods and these materials and became exposed to more and more um, teachers and um, builders and a whole community of people around the world who are, are building in this way. Um, I also spent time in rural Nicaragua um, building with a teacher of mine, working with women in um, a rural part of the country, working um, with their indigenous uh, building materials. So instead of us coming in as white people and saying, here's how you need to build, um, it was a very much of a collaborative effort where we were in a lot of ways learning from them um, and trying to figure out how can we improve some of these um, materials um, along the way. And um, so a lot of what I've learned has been a very hands-on um, and has been from women. So this, um, the women in the top left pictures, the Terra Foundation, um, we built a timber-framed farm stand in Vermont last summer. Um, and so we know that um, in the construction labor force, only less than 1% of the whole entire construction labor force is women. Um, and so I think as we talk about affordable housing and we talk about um, the empowerment of women, um, it's very essential that we start to um, bring more women into the workforce. Um, and so this is an outdoor classroom that we built um, in Nicaragua with, um, through a women's initiative using all natural materials. Um, so in other words, dirt and um, natural um, wood that we harvested. Um, and we used about five or six different building methods. Um, and then I was asked to come to Oregon to a company called Cobb Cottage Company to help facilitate workshops there. Um, you can see in the top left, we're building with straw bale. So this is another natural building method of using literally bales of straw. The other method you see is called Cobb, C-O-B, and um, it just means small round lump in Old English, but it's literally just clay, sand, and straw. Um, and so this is the method that's about four or 500 years old, and it came from the England, Scotland, Wales, part of the world, and came to the United States in the 70s. Um, and so I, I continued to um, just be incredibly inspired by the um, diversity of um, materials, um, the durability of materials. I think there's definitely a, a misconception that these materials will wash away. Um, it's the first question I usually get. Um, but in fact, we still, we have 7,000 years of history showing us that that's not the case, um, if built with correctly. And also with each experience, um, I really recognized the value of the community element, which I'm really missing right now in the middle of this pandemic and seeing these pictures just kind of makes me sad because, um, that, that sort of being in person, working together, um, everybody's put on the same level. So it doesn't really matter, you know, your gender, your race, your class, your economic value. When you are chopping straw or carrying buckets of mud, everybody is, is really on the, sa on the same level. Um, and so this is a clay, clay soil or, or a clay dirt um, made into an exterior plaster applied to a conventional brick wall. Um, you can see the artistic expression um, that can be achieved 
with the use of these materials. Um, and so in time, my, my friend Elder Carly Town um, here in Charleston saw what I was doing and she contacted me and said, you know, I love what you're doing. You know, my, my ancestors in Africa and my people in Africa, this is how they build. And will you come and lead a community building workshop on my land in Cross, South Carolina? And I said, well, I don't really know what I'm doing, but sure, why not? So, um, so I went and we, um, we literally built this crazy roof structure from um, downed wood that we found. We, we found old um, metal from a trailer, an old trailer that we used for the roof. And we built this wood-fired oven out of, um, out of earth. And um, it was an incredible experience of a lot of different kinds of people coming together and working together and building together. Um, and I, I recognized again the empowerment of that, um, of that experience and the empowerment that comes when people build with their hands. Um, and also you're building with mud, you're literally stomping on mud with your bare feet. So there's this sort of inner child that comes out of people when they get to work with these kinds of materials. Um, and so I love the, um, not just the materials, but I love the, the human connection that happens in these kinds of community building workshops. Um, so this is, um, gosh, probably eight or nine years ago, one of my first projects after um, the Gullah Geechee project. Um, but this is the On Dog Green. Um, some of you may know Eddie White, he has the barn jams every Friday. Well, I guess probably not right now, but um, he, uh, we built this pizza oven for him. Um, and they cook pizzas um, every Wednesday night. They probably cook a hundred or more pizzas out of this oven. Um, so that was another one of my early experiences. Um, I'm sure many of you know Jermaine Jenkins, Fresh Future Farm. We built her a chicken coop in a community building workshop. We used um, recycled shipping pallets, which we stuffed with straw and then finished with a clay plaster that we made with our own clay paint that we made. Um, this is the Romney Street Urban Garden. Um, some of you may have visited this um, cool little spot downtown. Um, again, we built this um, with the kids in the neighborhood um, through a community building effort. Um, <clears throat> this is an example showing you the kind of sculptural um, abilities with working with these materials. These are my students at the Building Arts College. Um, but if you like pottery and sculpting, then you would really love um, working with these materials as well. And this is the MUSC. Um, Urban Farm, one of our, our later projects that we did a couple semesters ago and finished with a, um, a natural mineral-based lime plaster. Um, Grow Food Carolina, this is a rammed earth bus stop that uh, we built in one day with a crew of about 15 people. We did it all by hand and then built this little uh, roof. So this is one of the most widely used um, bus stops in Charleston and it's in the blazing hot sun. Um, and so we created um, this little earthen bus stop in one day. And then um, this is a rammed earth um, kids playhouse that we're working on at the Pink House um, Neighborhood Resource Center in West Ashley. Um, and I unfortunately don't have a finished photo um, yet of this project, but it's coming together really nicely. So this is a method um, called rammed earth, um, which I mentioned a few times, um, which does has, have historical roots in the southern parts of the US. Um, and so kind of moving on as the work developed and I you know, continued to create, to build uh, or to teach community building workshops, um, also the architecture work at the same time has progressed um, this is a rammed earth, um, well, this is a wall section of a rammed earth residence in the Burns Down neighborhood of West Ashley. These are 18 inch thick um, earthen walls. 
Um, this is the home going up. And so it's um, essentially, it's just a, a masonry method, um, but the benefits of it are um, it's rot proof, mold proof, termite proof, fire proof. Um, and then that earth kind of acts as a sponge. So it sucks up humidity. So it kind of comes with its own humidity control. Um, and then obviously there's a lot of environmental um, reasons why this is um, environmentally um, superior to something like concrete. Um, this is my daughter Ren sitting inside of the home when it's finished. Um, this is, these are rammed earth walls with um, cob windowsills finished with clay paint and a mixture of beeswax and a natural linseed oil. So everything um, in the home is as um, our natural materials. <clears throat> this is a rammed earth um, residence on Johns Island, South Carolina. And this is me with the Department of Housing showing them these homes, trying to convince them that um, we need to embrace these methods for um, affordable housing um, so that we can um, address ev environmental issues um, as well as housing issues. And I'm working on it. I'm trying to infiltrate their, um, their ways of thinking. <laughs> Um, and so beyond building with dirt and mud, there's, there's many other methods that fall under the umbrella of natural building, but um, you may have heard of hempcrete. That's a pretty becoming a, a very popular method recently with the industrial hemp um, movement. And so this is nothing more than taking a natural plant fiber, which is hemp, hemp herd, and mixing it with lime and you're creating um, an insulation that gets packed in between your studs. And this is, um, uh, before the pandemic hit, I went to Greenville Technical College here in South Carolina and um, worked with the students there on a um, hempcrete building project as they, are, they have an affordable housing um, initiative that they're working on. Um, this is a snapshot of the first straw bale wall to be passed through Historic Charleston's Architectural Review Board. Um, I helped a client move that through the BAR um, and it's obviously unprecedented. Um, but so this is pretty cool. These are literally straw bales stacked up um, and then this, this is just the garden wall but um, is finished out with um, natural plasters and some brick detailing. And again, I don't have a finished picture of this one either, so I'm sorry about that. Um, and um, so there's lots of methods that, um, that incorporate the use of building with natural materials. Um, I have used my own home. It's, so I'm a very creative person um, and I need to get my hands in it. So for me, um, I'm, I'm, I just want to dig into it. So I've done a lot of experimenting at my own house. This is um, just some sculpt sculpting that I did right on the drywall. Um, these are clay paints that I made um, for my home with a friend, literally just some terracotta clay soil that we got from the upstate and we screened it. And then we added um, some wheat paste into it and turned it in. And these are, these are ancient methods. This is all, it's not anything I'm making up. This is all stuff that goes back thousands and thousands of years and natural plasters and paint were typically done by women. So I've found over the years that women are very drawn to this. Um, and I think, you know, there's just something in our DNA that, that sort of recognizes this. Um, these are lime or natural mineral based plasters that I've done at my home as well. Um, Tadalact is an ancient Moroccan um, natural plaster method that is waterproof. So this is um, inside my shower. Um, and so the biggest things, um, you know, that I kind of live by in my work um, is um, to go barefoot to have fun and to be a kid. Um, and these are all things that sort of happens in these natural building workshops and classes. Um, so um, just a few things to wrap up. Um, 
I, I, I only had 20 minutes, 25 minutes, so I had to cram a lot into this. Um, so I have a lot more I can share with you. Uh, we did just launch um, a Root Down Members Club that we have a two for one promotion right now. If you wanna sign up, um, it comes with all kinds of perks. Um, one of them being free webinars. We also just launched a webinar series on all of these different topics. So if you wanna learn more, definitely jump on our website and check that out. Um, but the, um, sorry, I had set my, my timer. Um, but the biggest, I want to just mention this before I sign off is that um, the kind of underlying um, message behind all of this work is it's fun and it's interesting to me because it's very um, it's a lot of creative work and it's outside of the conventional architecture, which I do plenty of too. I'm just not focusing on that in this presentation. Um, but as we come to understand more about climate change, and how buildings affect climate change. Um, we know from the research that's been done recently that the materials that are highly manufactured and processed, such as your concretes, your spray foams, um, your styrofoams, all of these very highly energy intensive materials is what is really contributing to our global warming potential. And as we shift into um, plant, it's really plant-based buildings, like a plant-based diet, you got plant-based buildings. So we've got a whole bunch of people working on um, natural, um, natural fibers for insulations. Um, and that you may have heard of mycelium mushroom insulations. There's all kinds of incredible innovative work that's happening right now. Um, and I'm just scratching the surface here. So please, um, check out our website, follow us on Instagram, and would love to um, answer any questions that you guys have. April, that was amazing. Thank you so much. This is why, you know, Creative Mornings is so important because we're learning about what creatives are doing in our own backyard that we didn't ever know. And I said in the chat that I want to sign up if you're ever looking for volunteers and quite a few people said me too so <laughs> i think if you ever need um people who don't know what they're doing to help you we are down um so april if you want to um did you stop sharing your screen and i'll put my slide up and then if you want to browse the q a there's quite a few um questions for you and you can just pick out the ones that you want to answer Oh goodness. Okay. Nothing like being put on the spot here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me, oh, I don't know what happened. Here we go. Questions went away. Here we go. Um, sorry guys, I'm scrolling down to where the questions start. What architects and builders inspire and influence you? So the first, um, the first architectural work that I saw that was really inspiring to me was the work of um, Gaudi in Barcelona. Um, sure, I'm sure many of you know who he is, but um, very, very organic sculptural kind of an architecture that was very unprecedented at the time, but the, I saw his work in college when I did a study abroad in Europe and um, so much of that came later to, I, I sort of connected those dots between the natural building work that I was starting to see and his work. Um, but other than that, um, I love um, Sam, Samuel Mafi. He formed the Auburn, studio, Auburn University's um, rural studio um he's one of my idols he they work with um rural communities poor communities in alabama and the south to build really um awesome houses for people using salvaged materials um he's been a great inspiration to me and then a lot of my just natural building colleagues um that are just too many to name right now so, um, yeah, so let's see. 
Okay, it looks like both the Church of the Holy Cross and the Borough House Plantation are in Sumter County. That's correct. Like Statesburg, South Carolina. Was rammed earth a popular building method for that area during the time they were built? So um, what I found was that, first of all, the this knowledge of building with earth came to the Southeast by way of the enslaved Africans. Um, so this knowledge um, was was cut, came here from them and um i thought that was pretty interesting and then um from from what I, I have read i don't know how true this is um some of the earliest um slave cabins were built of earth and um these plantation owners recognized the how cool it was inside of these structures in the middle of the summer and then got their wheels spinning. And so like George Washington started to experiment with Rams Earth and these other plantation owners. Um, so anyway, the um, I wouldn't say that it was a popular method, but what I found was that um, there's definitely different areas in the Southeast that utilize Rams Earth at different times. Um, there's a Rams Earth housing village in Alabama that was done in the 20s. Um, Texas A&M did a lot of work with rammed earth. Clemson University did a lot of um, testing and research on rammed earth in the 50s. Um, so there's there's a lot of, there's sort of a, there is a history, but I wouldn't say that it was super strong. Um, and then I've been told there there was actually rammed earth residences um, downtown at the Battery at one time. Um, so I think, you know, more so it's just a part of our history that was sort of unwritten. And so a lot of us working in, in natural building are, are wanting to keep those stories alive and keep that knowledge alive. Um, so let's see. We need to put together a community, oh, a CM community building project. I would love that. Hopefully we can all get back to working together soon, I'm hopeful. Um, let's see. I wonder if it would work for sauna. Oh yeah, um, definitely. There are earthen saunas. Um, it's been one of my bucket list items for a long time. Um, so yes, there's, you can build with cob or rammed earth or a number of, of other methods to do an earthen sauna. Um, is it more costly than other materials? So that question, I would say it depends, um, depends who's building it. If you're, I have a lot, a lot of owner builder clients. So if you are, um, building for yourself, then yes, you can do it on a dime because the material cost is, is literally, literally dirt cheap, but, um, but the labor is going to be more expensive. It's going to be harder. So if you're hiring a specialty builder to come in and build you something, then you're going to pay more. If you're doing it on your own, you're going to pay less. So there's a lot of cost is always a very complex um, equation. So um, I have tons of questions that I have to ask whenever anyone asks me about cost. Um, let's see. Keep infiltrating. <laughs> I like that. Um, is there a large learning curve working with builders and other craftspeople to implement these methods in your project? Um, again, I think it, it just depends. Like I, I, I work, a lot of my clients come to me because they already have the experience. So they've been sort of um researching experimenting they've taken some classes they know this is what i want to do can you help me design the house get it through permitting blah, 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 blah. um if i'm you know starting from scratch with someone then yeah i mean i would say it all of these methods are um there's it's not rocket science so there's usually just like a handful of things to know um and then um it's it's not anything super complicated and that's why a lot of people especially women love this because um there's not a lot of expensive or heavy power tools being used it's um it's more about 
um, shoveling and mixing with your hands and your feet, or, you know, you might have an electric mixer or something like that, but um, it's all in all pretty, pretty simple stuff. Um, let's see, maybe a couple more questions. Uh, you, okay. So from Lauren, your work looks very experimentative. When you decided to go on your own, how did you decide to hone your focus and what you offer? Or does it, does it evolve over time? Um, definitely evolved over time. Um, for me, I was really looking for a change. Um, I was at a point of uber frustration um, to the point of thinking of switching um, industries at the time and then it was like bam this this just like the gates just opened for me and i knew instantly that this was what i wanted to do but i had no idea what was going to come of it um and also you know so many people were like oh you belong like out in california or oregon or up in Asheville, so like you can do this stuff in charleston so it was many years of um of an evolution for sure. Um, so, you know, and, and I always tell people like, just do it, just get into it, you know, like just dig in and, and you can't go wrong. So um, yes, my work has definitely evolved over time. And I think understanding the historical precedents that exist, um, you know, with, that was really, when I found out about the historical rammed earth in South Carolina, that really, it was a turning point for me because that that's what really drew me to that method and now today we have building science um we understand more we can take that primitive rammed earth and make it very appropriate for our specific south carolina climate um and we have to address seismic and and all these other issues now as well um let's see and christy you just tell me when when i need to stop otherwise i'll I'll keep going. Um, I think this is from Pam. I think you mentioned that you also teach what topics? Well, I um, so I I teach um, as an adjunct at the American College of Building Arts. I teach a sustainable building class, and then we also will do intensive courses, which we we're supposed to have a women's intensive course in June, but I'm kind of skeptical as to if that's going to happen. That was going to be on hempcrete and um, framing and natural um, finishing methods. Um, so now I've had to really shift into a virtual teaching um, experience. And so we've just launched a series of webinars. And so you can look at those topics on our website. And once we can get back to you know, working together in person, um, I had to cancel three community building workshops this year, which was pretty a, a bummer. Um, Um, let's see. How does the construction time of a home compare to conventional methods? Um, it, again, it depends. Um, it just depends on the method, depends on who's building it. But if you're trying to compare apples to apples, like a contractor team on each one, it's going to be relatively the same. Um, it's just a very, very different equation. But I wouldn't say necessarily a significant amount of time difference. April, thank you yeah. for going through all of those. Do you think if there um, are some questions that you weren't able to get to, can can people just uh, you know reach out to you on your social media handles? Yeah. How do you want sure. to get in touch with you? Yeah, um, I'm on Instagram under Root Down Designs. I'm also on Facebook under Root Down Designs. Um, you can contact me on my website on the contact page. Um, just type right in there um, or, sh or shoot an email to info at rootdowndesigns.com. Awesome. Well, April, thank you again so much. And um, if folks can stick around for, you know, 10 minutes, we're going to do uh, breakout sessions that you can 
say hello to a old friend or meet a new one and just kind of talk about how you're doing and, and get that daily interaction that we're all craving. So um, thank you again to April. That was amazing. Yes. I learned so much. My mind is blown. Um, <laughs> and it was really neat to see a, a true creative's work. So thank you. You're welcome. And I'll just say real quick that um, the biggest thing that I would want you to take away from here is, um, is to just, hopefully this allows you to think outside of the box in terms of everything you've ever learned about buildings and what a building is and um, what a safe or appropriate building is. So challenge everything you've ever been told about um, what buildings are and how, how to build them. So that's the biggest takeaway that I could hope that you leave with. <laughs> We will. And thank you again to 10 West Edge and Caroline. I think the ladies over there are going to put us into some breakout rooms. Um, if you can just stick around just 10 minutes, it will be fun. Perfect. Anne is going to throw us in those breakout rooms, Christy. So everyone just keep a lookout for that. Great. You should be in there in a minute. Thanks, guys. April, that was amazing. Oh, and I was supposed to say, we'll see you all June 12th.